Over the past several weeks, we have been talking about different names of God, things that we call God, we've called him. Uh, Jesus is known as Yeshua. Uh, God, uh, uh, the, the, the Trinity itself is known as Yahweh. That's the name of God, Yahweh. We've went through different names. Today, I want to talk about another name of God, something that he's referred to as. But before we get there, let me ask you a question. Do you know people in your life who start things and then don't finish them? Are any of you people who start things sometimes and then don't finish them? If you would like to come see my grapevines, and uh, yeah, that would be, I would, that would be a testament. Am I wrong? Uh, the, you know, I bought the, the landscaping timbers and then piled them there. So, you know, they were delivered there two years ago. Uh, and just one day I might put up a wire so they can actually climb on something instead of me having to mow around them every, every day. But we do, like, we start things sometimes and we don't finish them, right? Isn't that the case? You've got projects around your house. Some of you have drawers. Some of you have rooms where that's the theme of the room. Well, we just, just, put, it, just put it in the basement, right? Just get it out of, our, out of mind, out of sight. We'll finish that later. When's later? Whatever what? Whenever I have time. When do you think you're going to have time? Am I wrong? Maybe some of you are like, no, I'm on it. Like, I don't start something unless I'm going to finish it and I see it through every time. A lot of us are not like that. And with things like grapevines and stuff, that's funny and it's just annoying when you're mowing the grass and, you know. Uh, have you ever heard of the joke? Look, ladies, if a man says he's going to get something done, he's going to do it. You don't have to remind him every six months. You heard that one? A lot of truth to that. But in our house, I mean, it's, it, that's a mutual thing. Sometimes we start things and we don't get them done. Grapevines are one thing. There's some things in life where we, just, we need to see it through, right? You ever been given up on? Like, like whatever it was, it wasn't seen through and, and you were given up on it. So we're going to talk today about a God who doesn't quit on things. A God that, that see th- sees th- things through. I'll never forget, uh, I have some friends in Australia. And uh, they were over visiting and we were just you know, doing some light-hearted banner back and forth. And somehow the topic of World War II came up. And somehow the topic of Pearl Harbor came up. And then they got this cheeky little grin that the Australians do sometimes. And they said, yeah, Pearl Harbor, that's when World War II started, didn't it? With a big smile on their face. Because dumb American thinks that's when it started. That was the, that's what led us to entering into the war as, a, as United States of America. But World War II was going on before then. Correct, history social teachers? Yeah. So you know what I told him? This is, you'll be proud of me. This is really clever by me. I said, no, boys, that wasn't the beginning of the war, but it sure was the beginning of the end of it, wasn't it? And they knew I had them then, right? Because we just want things to be seen through sometimes, right? Some things are so important that we want to see them finished and saw through. We want to see evil defeated. We want to see uh, goodness possible. We want to see there, there's some things that need to be seen through, some things that need to be finished. And we serve a God who finishes things who finishes things. So, we're going to be in the book of Revelation. One quick tip here, guys. I want, I want one thing I just want to point out to you. This, this book here is written by a pastor named John. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to be leading the uh, Gator Small Group next Sunday morning, and we're going to be entering into it. I think you guys are starting to, we're starting the book of Revelation. Um, this is a book of... That this is a letter that a pastor is writing to churches, and it's 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 done in a, a apocalyptic style, which is something that that we don't read on a regular basis. We don't read like you don't pick up a newspaper or a book today, and it's written in apocalyptic apocalyptic literature. Um, sometimes people think that this is some kind of a code to tell us exactly 
how the world ends and in it they can see oh see this figure here that's russia and this figure here that's the uh the the euro and this is bitcoin and this is the you know look i'm not buying any of that this is a pastor writing to his churches who are under heavy occupation by rome and the book is called revelation it's the last book in our scriptures in our bible um, and this apocalyptic literature, the best way I know to describe it, it's okay to confess this in church. Any of you 90s kids really like Nirvana back in the 90s? So a lot of you probably like Nirvana. Some of you are like, am I allowed to admit that? I can promise you a lot of you, uh, the, the music you listen to was heavily influenced by this grungy dude named Kurt, named Kurt Cobain who led Nirvana. And after that, rock and roll as we knew it was changed in a lot of ways. He had a great influence in it. And if you've ever listened to the, the lyrics of Nirvana, they make no sense at the times. Like he just randomly, uh, uh, an albino, a mosquito, and like, where's this song going? But deep inside, I don't know, something about you connects with it sometimes. He, he, he was one of the most successful uh, rock and rollers ever, and he, and he had a great following. What are these songs? No, we don't know about that. We don't know exactly, but a lot, of, a lot of folks connected to it. One of my favorite country songs is Cover Me Up. Anybody ever heard of Cover Me Up by Jason Isbell? Yeah. I don't know what that song means, but I sure do like it. It means something for me. And you can even go online and Google, what the heck does Cover Me Up mean? Uh, some of y'all might have heard of Morgan Wallen. Morgan Wallen actually covered this song. It's art. It's poetry. It's it's not an exact formula. It's just, it's, it's, it's a song that we listen to and somehow it connects with us. That's the best way I know to describe apocalyptic literature. What the dude, the pastor here is named John and what he was writing was, was a lot of just kind of almost poetry, just imagery that he's using to minister to his churches at that time. And we start at the very beginning of Revelation. Not Revelations, Revelation. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to present this revelation to his servant John, who faithfully reported everything he saw. This is his report of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he's making some big claims. He's saying, what I'm about to tell you was told to me, was revealed to me from Jesus Christ directly. Okay? People usually don't say that kind of stuff. He just did. <laughs> God blesses the one who reads the word of this prophecy to the church. Then he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says. For the time is near. This letter is from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Let's just, I mean, we've already said that, right? Who's he writing it to? He's writing to seven churches in the province of Asia. Modern day Turkey. Those seven churches are what we would call modern day Turkey, okay? Grace and peace to you from the one who is who always was and who is still to come. He is still to come. Key in this entire book. He is still to come. As Christians, we believe that Jesus Christ not only came to earth, died, rose again, and ascended into heaven, we believe he is coming back one day. Across the Christian faith, almost, I mean, that, that, that's a prominent view. Now, how that's exactly going to happen is something to entertain yourself with as you go to sleep and out of books or whatnot. But he's coming back again. He's still to come. From the sevenfold spirit before his throne and from Jesus Christ, he is the faithful witness to these things. The first to rise from the dead and the ruler of all the kings of the world. What a bold statement. He is the ruler of all the kings of the world. Let's keep going. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us, he has made us a kingdom of priests for God his Father. Gosh, there's so many sermons here. I'm going to give you one today. But just so I want to stop along the way as we go here. Uh, here's the gospel. He freed us from our sins so by shedding his blood for us. It was our blood that was supposed to have been shed. That's what we deserve. But he shed it for us in our place. And we are now a kingdom of priests. That's why I am not a priest. That's why you call me pastor or preacher or some of y'all call me other things, and that's okay too. Sometimes it's not, but hey, I, I don't cry myself to sleep too many nights. I mean, we're all priests. It's the, it's the kingdom 
where, where priesthood of believers, the idea that, that you don't need an individual to, to, to gain access to Jesus. Well, you do. You, you do need an individual to gain access to God, and he was Jesus. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Look. So here we get into this, this, this imagery stuff, okay? Where it's like, man, what's he? If you have read the book of Revelation, it gets pretty wild. Like there's creatures with multiple eyes and everything else, okay? But here we go with a little bit of that imagery. Look. He comes with the clouds of heaven. And everyone will see him. Even those who pierced him. And all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen. And this is Jesus speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega? You ever heard that before? I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We'll come back to Alpha and Omega later. Says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. He's claiming that, look, I'm the creator of all things. I've not gone away. I've not forgotten you. I'm not, letting, I'm not giving up on you. I'm not going away. I'm, I'm still to come. I am the Almighty One. And that's how he starts this book out. With this idea that, that, that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He, he always has been. He always will be. And that's so hard for us to wrap our minds around because we live in a, in a, in a world that has to play along with the laws of physics, which says there is time, and there is space. And this God says, I created time and space. I live outside of the, these laws. Let's keep reading. So that's how we started this book. Let's get to the end of this book, Revelation 21. There's 22 chapters in this book. And here's near the end, Revelation 21, 1 through 7. So he starts to talk here about... Uh, about the end times. He's already talked about them quite a bit. But he's talking to him about them more here. And I'm not going to comment a whole lot on this. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. This, we'll stop just for a little bit. There's a lot of things I want to say there we don't have time for. But notice this. It's coming down. The new Jerusalem is coming down to us. Like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain all these things are gone forever. I love that verse. Let's read it again. <sighs> he will wipe every tear away from their a tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Often, whenever you uh, see the, the imagery of heaven in, in, in cartoon strips or in media or whatnot, you might see like like literal pearly gates and literal streets of gold. And usually there's a bunch of clouds everywhere because it's all up there, right? I, th I think heaven's going to look a lot more like, we, like things look right now than we understand. Heaven's going to come, come down. The new Jerusalem will come down. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. He's making everything new. This is Jesus speaking. He's making everything new. What's that mean? I have no idea, but I can't wait for it. Right. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful part of our faith. Like You don't have to have it all figured out. The one on the throne has it all figured out. He's going to make all, through, all things new, and I'm ready to take him up on that. Amen. I need some things made new right now. A lot of people read... Let me get off a little bit of a tangent. A lot of people are just fascinated with what's going on in the Middle East all the time. And they, and, they, and they think because they see these little things happening, it, it, it's uh, predictions about exactly when God's coming back or whatnot. Sometimes people will say to me, Josh, did you see what happened to Israel today? Did you see what happened in the Middle East today? What, did something bad happen again in the Middle East? Like, I can't believe that. Am I wrong? Like, <laughs> there's something always really bad happening over the Middle East. And he says he's going to make all things new. And then he said to me, write this down. 
For what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. Where have we heard that before? This, it is finished. And Jesus said this on the cross. It's one of the very last things he said before he died on the cross. It is finished. He finishes things. Sometimes don't feel like it's finished, though. I mean, we look around the world today. We look at stuff going on in our life. We, things don't seem finished. If it's finished, then why did it end this way? It is finished. Here he is again, kind of wrapping up this book with this theme. I am the Alpha and the Omega, omega the beginning and the end. To all, to all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of, of, of the water of life. All who are victor victorious will inherit all these blessings. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. Powerful stuff. Uh, Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. These are two letters in the uh, Greek alphabet. Uh, I bet you can't guess one is Alpha. <laughs> Alpha right there, Omega right there. You might have seen these uh, images uh, throughout Christian art uh, for uh, centuries. They've been using this imagery. Sometimes you'll see them transposed upon themselves. Like, has anybody got a Saint, he's got a St. Louis Cardinal, you know, he, uh, St. Louis Cardinal emblem's got the S with the L right on top of it. IU's got the I with the U, like Ty's got back there, the I, U, like you'll see the A and the Omega trans, you know, right on top of each other right there. It's the idea that Jesus is the beginning, of the, the beginning and the end. He finishes things. That's the first letter in the Greek alphabet. That's the last letter in the Greek alphabet. There are no other letters that don't come, that, that come outside of these. I mean, they're all in between these letters. Jesus is the beginning and the end. He will finish things. Now, how does he say he's going to finish things? He's going to make all things new. He's going to wipe tears from eyes. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more death. All the bad junk. He's going to say, I'm, I'm going to fix all that. That's hard to believe, ain't it? Let's just be honest. That can be really hard to believe, isn't it? Anybody here just ever asked the prayer, what are you waiting for, Jesus? <coughs> like, what, what are you waiting for? Because I got this going on in my life. And I, I'm ready for the, for the Omega part of this. He's the beginning. He created you. He created all things. He created all things and he loves you. That's why he, he created you. Who here, when you were writing, uh, remember back, you, you kids aren't even know what I'm talking about. I just realized you're not going to. Back in the day when we had to like write essays, we literally writ them out. <laughs> On college rule, remember, who here remembers college rule notebook paper? You all lying. You all scared to death. I've called on you too many times, haven't I, after you raised your hand, and now you won't do it anymore. You all remember college rule notebook paper. And if you were going to write uh, a paper, you were going to, you know, for school, you were going to write it out with pen. Am I wrong? Any lefties here that always hated the, the notebooks? Anybody? Fine. And who here, as you were writing these papers, oh, remember, remember the Christmas story? Remember that? And he's writing that, and, and, and after he, you know, he starts to write it and stuff. And someone says, we were writing, um, writing these, the, the, these papers, like, oh, this is, uh, that's not what I wanted to say, and just rip it out and throw it out the trash can. Right? Sometimes they land in the trash can, sometimes not. And you would go through several pieces of paper, because this one, I, I've screwed, it started off well, but I screwed this one up. But now you just on a laptop, and you can just delete things and cut and paste, or I've got this idea, I'm going to save it for later, and this and that. That's what we would do back in the day. You would, you, would just, you would just trash it, because it's not good anymore. I started this, it didn't, it didn't really turn out the way I thought. Around paragraph two, it kind of got wonky. Let's start all over again. That's, that's not how God is. That's not how God is. He doesn't throw things away. He doesn't throw you away. His creation, he, he cherishes you. He keeps you. He sees it through. He makes all things new. Yeah, but I might have started off as a great piece of work or whatever from, from, from God, but I've done screwed this up bad, Josh. I, I, I hear you. I've screwed some things up myself. Trust me on that. 
He doesn't give up on you. He doesn't throw you away like, like garbage to be disposed of. He sees things through. He, he's persistent. He, he's loving. One of the things we see in the, in the story, the, the ancient story of, of the ark where, where, where God flooded the, the world. And then he gave the sign. Who, anybody here seen any rainbows yesterday? We did. We were out kayaking the Salina. We saw some rainbows. God, God told him to Noah, he said, you know, I'm going to give you the sign of a rainbow. I'll never do that again. Like, he, he's not going to give up on us. He's not going to give up on you. He sees things through. I know a lot of you are probably, and who knows what your situation is, but you're ready to be done with it, right? You're, 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 you're done with it. You, you, you've, you've lost hope. You see no... No future and whatever that thing is. I feel you. I feel you. What we're seeing in society now is a lot of people are are going through a lot of a lot of changes. Like this, the, the, this is what it used to be. Is not maybe what I thought it was. Maybe there's a different direction to go. And maybe God is calling you in, di- in, in different directions. But know this: God is not giving up on you. He has not given up on his church. He has not given up on his people. And he will see things through. He does love you. He is the Omega. And at the end of the day, you, you, could, you could call me just some kind of a wishful dreamer or I use religion as a crutch or whatever. But at the end of the day, to read these words, uh, verse 4, he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. I take Jesus up on that. I need that. And I don't know when this is coming. And if you're trying to read the book of Revelation to figure out when Jesus is coming back, you, you, you're, the, the, the scriptures themselves say he does not know. Jesus himself does not know when he's coming back. Only the Father knows that. So if you think you can figure out something that Jesus doesn't know, good luck to you, okay? But what he has promised us is this, and what we do know is this, that he is coming back. He is going to make all things right. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more death. He will see you through it. He will see you through it. He will rescue you. He has not stopped loving you. I know people in your lives have stopped loving you before. We've all experienced. He's not going to do that. That's not who he is. He loves you to the end of it all, to the, to the omega. He loves you. And, and my challenge for you this morning is just to recognize that. Just to recognize that there still is hope, that, that, that God has not forgotten you. He hasn't promised everything's going to be sunshine and roses. These people knew there's not sunshine and roses. These churches in Turkey were under heavy persecution from the Roman authorities. This Antichrist they were talking about, which, by the way, I think he's died a long time ago. I think he was a Roman dude. They, they understood heartache. They understood hardship. They understood persecution, more so than we ever will. And that's what, that's what John was telling them. Like, guys, God has not forgotten you, even though it feels like he's forgotten you, even though they're coming after you, even though all these things... He still loves you. And my challenge for you this week is just to believe that. Just to believe that God loves you and he has not given up on you and there still is hope. So whatever it looks like this week, whatever you're dealing with that's wearing you out and you just don't have much energy for anymore, however that turns out or wherever God leads you to do in that situation, whether that's change or not, he loves you. He has not given up on you. And he's already proclaimed it. It is finished. I could, like, so I use too many sports analogies. Do you have some friends who love their team so much that they already celebrate the win of a game before the game's played? You all have those friends, right? If you have a Kentucky basketball friend in your life, you know these people have already won the NCAA National Championship next year. Right? That's what they believe. Okay, and that is foolish, correct? Because that's probably not going to happen. But with Jesus, like he's already saying, it is finished. 
I've already, I've already called the game. Like the game's over. Like, it, like yeah, we're, you're going to have to go through the game, but, but, but the outcome is already done. We're victorious. We won. If you wake up every morning, before you put your feet on the floor, and before you know that meeting that i got to go to today, that nothing good can come out of this meeting, that phone call that you got to make today, that nothing good can come out, you know, that, that's in your mind already. If you can put, before you put your feet on the floor, if you can remember that Jesus has already said it's finished, even if that meeting turns out poorly the way you think it's going to, even if that phone call works out well, even if that relationship ends the way you think it's going to end, it is finished. God will make all things new, and he will, he will fix it all. I don't know how, and I don't know, I don't know how, but he promises that. And I'm willing to take him up on it. And if you are too, I think that can change a lot of things in your life. Let's pray. God, we love you. <clears throat> Thank you for being our Alpha and Omega. Thank you for being our beginning and our end. Not only did you create us, and, and this whole world, and just put it all into motion, but you stay with us through it all. You don't desert us. You don't leave us. You don't abandon us. And not only that, you promised to stick with us. <clears throat> you said, not only will you finish it, but you have finished it. It is finished. We do have victory in you. And God, for that, we, we are forever thankful. Father God, we love you. And it's in the holy, matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.